Hey everyone, this is Gregory, and today I'm going to walk you through how to animate a shape so it has the effect that it's pulsating. Some of you requested this so you could apply it to a cell structure for a presentation to give it a little more character and life. And let's see what the end result is going to look like. You see it's changing in shape, scale, and it has this blur effect that goes in and out. This is all pretty simple stuff. Don't feel intimidated by this. This is something that we're gonna get through pretty quick here. So to begin, open up your composition. And to begin, we're gonna start by grabbing the ellipse tool, hold down shift, drag it to whatever size you prefer. And we have our starting shape. This will be the cell structure and go Hit the fill, stroke, put whatever color that you want to apply for your shape. I always prefer to have things in alignment, so I'm going to adjust that. And now we're going to get into the first effect that we're going to drop onto the shape, which is turbulent, oops, turbulent displace. When you find that in the drop down, click it, hold it, and drop it on top of your shape, and boom, it has changed to this lopsided, uh, circular ish form. And so that's kind of cool. Now, what this effect is going to do is going to give it this occurring motion by using this evolution function. Hover over the stopwatch have your playhead at the beginning of the composition, click it, that's gonna apply a keyframe that you see in your timeline. So that's just giving the shape a starting point at zero. Now we wanna drag the playhead to the end and change the zero and let's add five. And you can see now it changed shape once more. Let's see how it looks if we play it through. Ooh, it's moving around, it's all funky, and that's cool, but that's not giving us that um, pulsating effect. To do that, we're gonna add the next effect, which before I get into it, I just wanna make sure that all of these are correct. Yep, so we want to type in fast box blur and so once that's typed in you can see that drops down over the blur and sharpen section drag it drop it nothing happens yet because we haven't applied uh, a numerical value to the blur radius so just like adding a keyframe to the front of the composition uh, for the turbulent displace, we're going to do that with the blur radius. Right now, it's at zero, so let's start by adding a keyframe. Oops. Now, this is something that you might run into. So I added a keyframe, but what I've realized is that I also have the evolution still highlighted. And so now that means that keyframe is being applied to that as well. So hit Command Z if you run into that issue. And we are back to just the turbulent displays. So let's bring the fast box in over our shape. It's there. You can see it's kind of grayed out as well. So just click out of it. We'll get rid of that. Now over here, we're gonna go open our fast box, blur radius. Now hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe there. And this is going to create that kind of in and out um, blur effect that just gives it a little more life to the pulsating effect of whether the cell is dying or mutating or um, just going through some occurrence. So I'm going to add another keyframe halfway in between my first frame. This 
we'll bump up mm, to three. And you can see how it goes into the blur halfway, but we want it to go in and out. So let's go to the end of the first frame, drop the three, bring it back to zero, enter. Now this is where we're gonna get into expressions. And the expressions are useful for a lot of ways of taking effects and presets and just being able to get more into kind of the root of the effect to allow you more options by adding variables which right now we have these three values here and so instead of having to you know copy these and apply it to the rest of the sequence what we can do is hold option hover over blur radius and you'll notice that it brings this drop down the expression you want to type in is called loop out those expressions already in after effects so you can just click on loop out and you'll see the cursor is blinking in front of the brackets bring it outside because in order for this to work you need a semicolon for after effects to re read what the variable loop out is changing from so now that you have done that there you go it's now coming in and out of this blurred focus which just gives it again more life to the overall cell to give this pulsating effect we're going to continue to work with the loop out but what we're going to do is go down to the transform so i like to just kind of have this organized hit transform and so we've got scale right there bring the playhead to the beginning of the composition and scale is well depending on the value it's gonna come in and out based off of the anchor point and right now it's at 100 we are going to add a keyframe leave it at 100 bring it over where you have the first keyframe for the blur and again this is preference so it's scale I'm gonna go 117 why not okay now the cell shape has grown take the playhead to the end of the first frame and bring it back down to its original size so we have it growing and again we want this to repeat throughout the composition sequence. To do so, again, option, hover over the stopwatch. That brings up the ability to type in loop out. Enter that. Remember, semicolon. Once that's there, click outside anywhere. And now that has applied to the scale. And let's see what it ha what it does. Press spacebar. Okay, the rendering slow, but you can see it's growing in size, but it's not really pulsating because it's not happening fast enough. Simple solution: hover over the three keyframes. If you hold Option, you'll be able to move them in relation to each other, so you can bring it in and out and this is preference again so I'm just kind of eyeing it there we go pulsating well that's most of it the last small detail on this again is kind of again around preference but I noticed this blur is applied to the whole cell and to me that doesn't give it kind of dimension it just is kind of this flat effect and go back to your effects and find blur radius where are you fast box blur blur radius and so under the heading right here it's applied to both the horizontal and vertical which is giving you just that overall blurredness. I 
I'm going to change it to just horizontal. It's subtle, but yeah, to me at least, I can see that there's a little kind of clarity on the outer sides of the cell shape. And I kind of like that. But again, it's preference. You could change it to vertical. You can play around with feathering it. Again, After Effects is not something to be, you know, daunted by. There's a lot of different functionalities to it. Once you understand the basic tools, how the effects and presets work, and you can get into these expressions like loop out relatively fast, you can take just a basic ellipse tool and turn it into an animated cell structure that you can apply to a project, anything that uh, you want. So always explore, go into the parameters, and just have fun with it. Don't be afraid. Look at it as, you know, a friend, maybe even a best friend. That was cheesy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I had fun putting this together and hopefully we'll be here again with a new tutorial.